With League of Legends having an insane collection of skins, it shouldn't come as a surprise that some of them provide a slight advantage over others. In this video, I have assembled just some of the most pay-to-win skins in League of Legends history, and let's start off this list by talking about Dark Waters Vladimir. Originally part of the Dark Waters event, this skin is actually pretty cool in changing Vladimir's effects to a murkier and more obviously watery style. And while of course everything looks fine on the main rift, once it comes to facing this skin in the river, well, that's a different story. Especially in the chaotic fights over objectives, it can be pretty hard to tell sometimes when Vladimir's most important abilities are used, which for a champion that does some pretty strong damage is obviously an issue. And as if you weren't able to hit him before, have fun trying to see him as well. And while later on we'll cover some more skins that focus on hitbox oriented issues, let's talk about the poster child for hitbox related problems. Of course, I'm referring to Project Ash. And while I have seen people mentioning that her W animation ends a bit prematurely, that's a small issue compared to the issue that is her ultimate. Ultimate. For as clean as the ult is on this skin, it has a deceptively small hitbox compared to the other Ash arrows. Largely for this reason, this skin used to be banned in professional play, however since Ash's reappearance in the meta, I've seen many players running the skin so that no longer seems to be the case. Now this next skin may be a bit more of a personal vendetta of mine, so I'll keep it brief, but I've always had a hard time facing up against Omega Squad Vagar. Though his E could actually probably be argued to be pay to lose, this skin's other three abilities seem to make finding the Tiny Master of Evil a lot harder than it really needs to be. The the first issue is the similarity between his Q and R, which have similar effects and are kind of hard to distinguish between in the middle of a fight. And in addition to his similar looking abilities, his W seems to be noticeably harder to identify compared to his other skins based on the little transparency area inside of it. Or maybe I just can't play into Vagar and I'm overdosing on Copium. Yeah, no, it's definitely not that. But getting back into the poster children of misleading hitboxes, let's talk about one of the more iconic and classic skins for broken visuals with Eye Blitzcrank. As I'm sure many of us are aware, Blitzcrank's hook can be one of the most devastating abilities in the entire game, so with this skin changing the animation of this ability, that can be an arguably unfair challenge. Not only does the hitbox seem to be a lot larger than the skin shows, but the Q's lack of an incredibly stretched out wire makes the ability a lot less identifiable. I mean, heck, there's probably enough blank space there for Taylor Swift to write her name. That's kind of an obscure joke, but I, I think we can keep it in. And while, as I mentioned, I will be covering the ultimate criminal for ultimate hitboxes later, let's take another look back at some of the weird hitboxes that are slightly deceiving that are actually still in the game right now. Firstly, we have Forsaken Jace hitbox not only being harder to see, but also harder to know the size of. Though I'm unsure if this skin is disabled professionally, as there isn't really any sort of official ban list that Riot puts out for skins, the ranged Q size difference seems pretty noticeable when compared to his others. And not only does this seem to be a problem for his regular Q cast, but in addition it still seems to be an issue for his QE combo. And also a part of the scuffed Q hitbox club, we have the dual threat of Spirit Blossom and Sea Dog Yasuo. Now despite both these skins actually being pretty sick, their Q tornadoes are noticeably thinner compared to their counterparts, and even though it's not the most atrocious thing in the world, there have been a couple of times where I've been left wondering how in the world that Q hit, which is something that I've also had to worry about when it comes to Ellerwood Bard's Cosmic Binding. Now normally Bard's Qs fire out in a more rectangular shape, however with this skin in particular, despite obviously having the same hitbox, it looks a lot smaller and more circular with its little pebble rock seed thing. So while Bard can screw over his own teammates with his ult, now you too can also be screwed over by his one damaging ability. Yippee! However, at least you can see this ability unlike Arclight Varus who has infamously solidified itself as one of the hardest skins to keep track of in the game. Now due to Arclight skins having a golden hue to them, they have a similar color to the pathing of the rift, and when you have a thin, high damage ability like Varus's Q, that can be kind of an issue. And while of course you still can see his abilities compared to let's say his base skin, I think I know which Varus I'd rather be fighting. However, I would not want to fight any of these upcoming skins who have actually had competitively beneficial features outside of just weird coloring. And why not start with the incredibly popular skin, Galaxy Slayer Z. This skin is of course known for its smooth animations and awesome sound design, however there is actually a time where using one of its emotes could actually give you vision over an area that you shouldn't have normally been able to see. As shown by Vandral here in this clip, by emoting and then quickly recalling, Zed would leave his emote shadow behind, which as long as you didn't move in fountain would grant you vision in that area. That's right, no wards, no champions, just a shadow. And similarly, Zombie Brand could identify the presence of enemies even if they weren't in vision at all. And this wasn't just if he was right next to you and you were in a bush, he could actually do this from a pretty decent distance away. Since this skin has a specific zombie walking animation when moving towards champions, by clicking where an enemy champion was, the animation would play as you walk towards them whether you could actually see them or not. Now there are still of course champions in the game who can do similar things such as Trinomir's W lighting up even if he doesn't see you, but that's part of the champion's built-in kit. And on the topic of annoying 
fighting crit champions, let's get into our second to last pay to win skin with Special Forces Gangplank. This skin is one of Gangplank's best, if not the very best skin because of how smooth everything plays, but when it comes to the animations of this skin, that's where things can become a little bit misleading. Now to understand this difference, we first have to take a look at the animations of Gangplank's other skins. Now this is his non-crit animation for his Q, and this is his crit animation. As you can tell, both of these are visibly different. And this is Special Forces Gangplank's both crit and non-crit animation, which is the exact same animation as all of his normal crits. I mean, either way, the barrel's still gonna hit like a truck, but it's nice to know whether you're going to lose half your health or all of it. And now we have reached what I consider to be the most pay to win skin in all of League of Legends history. And of course, I'm talking about the very thumbnail of this video, the original version of Steel Legion Lux. Her auto attack and Q animations are very similar. Her E was very hard to see, but her ultimate I mean, words can't even describe how bad this animation was. Like, imagine seeing this line and being like, oh, that's the ultimate hitbox, and that just expands into what it actually is. Now, this skin has, of course, since been reworked, but even still, it is still banned from pro play since it has a very similar Q and auto attack, so even though the glory days of its skin have passed, you technically can get away with this being a pay-to-win skin, even today. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to check out this video, and if you did enjoy, I have two videos coming up in just a moment as well, if you'd like to check out those. But yeah, that's all I got for you so leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you want to i, I don't know have a great rest of your day or night i'll catch you in the next one later